to ready to go. Mm -hmm. All been accommodated. First of all, a very warm welcome to our guests, our media guests, and secondly to the crew. They have made it. They have done 18,284 kilometers since the 25th of August in a flat car. That's more than I thought. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, amazing. Yeah, I've tracked you. Go on. So, it sounds more than a kilometer. Alex, I may start in English. Uh, I'm just introducing Alex. He's the kind of, uh, how shall I say? Um, uh, he had this crazy idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he had this crazy idea, and he will, Alex, okay. please introduce your team later. Absolutely. And uh, please tell us the full story afterwards. I may start with some words in German. So, 1955 had a group von sechs britischen Männern hat, das hat sich die verrückte Idee in den Kopf gesetzt, sie möchten auf dem Landweg von London nach Singapur fahren. Wurde vorher noch nie gemacht, war auch bis dahin unmöglich. Man konnte bis Indien auf dem Landweg fahren, aber nicht weiter bis Singapur. Und diese sechs Männer, die haben das einfach probiert in diesen beiden Land Rovers. Und einer davon, der, der draußen steht, der hat tatsächlich bis heute überlebt und Alex hatte dann die verrückte Idee, das Ganze noch einmal zu machen, allerdings auf dem umgekehrten Weg. So sind sie damals gefahren, das must be maybe Burma, something like that. Yeah. And now you don't see it, so these two canisters, they were named gin and tonic. So to refuel your car for the last leg to London, I may offer you some Austrian gin oh. and award-winning gin. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, uh, and two cans of tonic for you. That's a good, that's a good ratio. Uh, <laughs> one half, one half. Thank you so much. We've got some more. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Oh, well, gosh. So, That's continue amazing. the story. <laughs> this is how they drove in those days. Uh, the two vehicles were called Oxford and, uh, and Cambridge, and the vehicle named Oxford luckily survived. And now let's watch what they've experienced. By road from London to Singapore, more than 18,000 miles by Land Rover, the Oxford and Cambridge Far Eastern Expedition set up a new record. And not only a record of enormous distances, but of a journey through every kind of terrain that Europe, the Middle East, and Asia could offer. Normal 86-inch wheelbase Land Rover station wagons, painted dark blue and light blue in friendly rivalry, with 50-gallon extra fuel tanks built in. Smooth going on the German autobahn between Stuttgart and Munich. Road surfaces they will look back on with envy long before they have left behind the soil of Europe. Onward from Damascus for the 600 mile desert crossing to Baghdad. And for company, one of the incredibly tough Nairn buses, which follow the pipeline route from Syria to the capital city of Iraq. The Land Rovers are loaded aboard country boats to make the crossing and drift the little downstream until they come to a road on the far side. The road that will carry them on towards Darjeeling and Burma. Not all the bridges have stood the test of time on this unused road. No wonder it takes a couple of hours to travel 15 miles. From the picking up of the escort in Malaya, the journey down to Singapore itself begins to take on the semblance of a triumph. A true triumph of friendly rivals. In Singapore, they get the welcome they deserve as the first motorists to have driven across this great overland route. A journey which was a triumph for rover engineering. These sturdy Oxford and Cambridge vehicles were examined by the rover organization on their return and it was found that the engines were still perfectly sound in every respect. Not a bit the worse for this toughest of endurance tests. 18,000 miles. London to Singapore. Und weil die damalige Route auch durch Österreich geführt hat, das ist ein Screenshot von, von einem anderen Film, uh, und hört deshalb drauf, aber die sind dann über Jugoslawien weitergefahren. Und weil die damals durch Österreich gefahren sind, wollte das Team unbedingt wieder durch Österreich fahren und die Route möglichst originalgetreu 
nachzufahren. So, thank you very much for making a stopover in Vienna. And Alex, it's your turn now. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Okay. No, well, thank you. Next slide is the video, just to let you know. Oh, no, it's not. That is it. That is Oxford in Tajikistan. And surprisingly, even though it was, I think, about 10 degrees colder than here, I think Vienna somehow feels even colder. <laughs> but it's a city that I've wanted to come to my entire life. Um, so it's amazing to have this warm welcome and to bring back this lovely 64-year-old car to the same streets it was driving around in 1955. I think we were just looking at the book yeah. that was written about this journey saying they arrived, I think, shortly after the Russians had just left yeah. in 1955. <laughs> so it's, uh, this is how long ago since this car uh, had, had been here. But um, yes, we are here. There are eight of us, uh, although two are currently busy working on something rather exciting. But I just want to introduce everyone first. So my name is Alex. Uh, I am from the UK. We have uh, Larry Leong from Singapore, who's at the end there, who's actually on his third mm -hmm. Singapore to London drive. You <laughs> can't get enough of this. <laughs> uh, we have uh, our team doctor, Silverius Perber, at the back from Indonesia. Hello. Um, mm -hmm. We have our expedition manager, an old friend of mine, Marcus Alder from the UK. From Belgium, we have Therese Marie Becker, who is doing all our online storytelling. If you're following us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, that is who it is. And we also have two filmmakers who are actually currently busy cutting part of the film, which will come out next year, uh, from France, Leopold, and from America, David. And finally, we have Nat George, um, whose grandfather actually drove this car uh, from London to Singapore, and Nat is now here flying the family flag. So, we are here in Austria, as, as Dieter said, well, I think we're 106 days in. Uh, more kilometres than I thought. Uh, hey, that's amazing. I'm so impressed by us. Um, 18 plus thousand kilometres. Um, and we've crossed, this is our 19th country now. And some people have asked us along the way, why on earth are you doing this? Um, the simple answer to anybody who owns a Land Rover is if you have the opportunity to drive your Land Rover for 106 days across 23 countries, you would. Um, the second answer, is and the more meaningful answer is precisely that film that you just saw and in fact it was commissioned by a young producer at the bbc who now still works for the bbc 64 years later can anybody guess who that is david attenborough, david attenborough. Uh, so david attenborough commissioned that film that you just saw uh, he was a young 20 something producer in the bbc um, it's an astonishing achievement and if we just go back to that picture, which I love so much, um, six young men who decided to do something that had never been done before, which was cross to London to Singapore. No one even knew if it was possible. There weren't roads through large portions of this, of this journey, and some of the countries were still in active conflict. Uh, it took them six months to cross what became 18,000 miles, and um, six months after these six men uh, made history. And a book called The First Overland, I think, has gone on to inspire Land Rover lovers and, and car fanatics ever since. It's never gone out of print, that book, in 64 years. Now, um, time goes on, and as all things do, uh, people age. Three of these brilliant men are no longer with us. Uh, but one of them, uh, this man here, Nat's grandfather, Tim Slesser, in the pink tracksuit, um, he had a dream at 88 years old, uh, that he was still fit and healthy, and he wanted to do this journey again before it was too late. And um, I'm a filmmaker. I do tend to do stupid things involving history and travel. Uh, and when I met Tim, I said, go on, I will help you out. And we assembled this brilliant team uh, who were ready to do it. Our second stroke of luck was that this car here, which you've now just seen outside, which had been missing for 40 years on a tiny uh, dot of an island in the South Atlantic called St. Helena. It's where they sent Napoleon to the second time. Uh, it is in the middle of nowhere. And Oxford had been sent there 40 years earlier on a bird watching expedition and had never come home. And by 2017, it was being used as a home for chickens. Um, so a brilliant man called Adam Bennett from Yorkshire uh, a big fan of the first overland and, and Nat's grandfather's adventures. He went to St. Helena, he got it back, 
and he restored it, and it passed its MOT first time, which is amazing. And now, uh, with Tim's willingness to, to put this adventure back together, um, and the car being back here, and eight mad people who were willing to help him do it, so was born the last Overland. And um, we set off um, on August the 25th, that is a long time ago now, <laughs> uh, from Singapore, we had assembled a record-breaking uh, gathering of Land Rovers at that event. And um, I want to just take uh, you back to that moment, if I can find the video. Um, now, in a moment of sort of bittersweet, um, the day that we assembled uh, to go drive to London, Tim was there in Singapore and he fell ill on the morning we were leaving. So at 88, he put this whole thing together and sadly, he couldn't join us. But he, and he's very proudly been watching his grandson fill his enormous shoes and he will be waiting for us in England in how many days time? <laughs> one week, <laughs> one week's time, it's astonishing. So I'd like to take you back to the very beginning to the 25th of August in Singapore. We worked on maps, old maps and a compass. Nobody thought much of it, we did. So this is the reverse way back from Singapore to London in the original Eagle. Nat George is the same age as Tim was in 1955 and he will be carrying the torch for his grandfather. Just the fact that he was willing to do it aged 87 means I'd be silly not to do it for him aged 21. that comes with Land Rover, that defines the brand. Uh, you'll see there the route that was plotted out across that, that virtual map. And the route's quite important because in 1955, the route they were able to take as six Englishmen, as you see, took them through Austria. Uh, it took them through down through Greece into Turkey. They then went through uh, Syria, Iraq, Iran, um, and through Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, onwards um, through uh, India and into Burma. You saw that crossing there. And down then into a portion of the, uh, the journey where there were no roads um, to get down to, to Singapore. Now, here, 64 years later, the world has changed a lot. And there are some segments of that route that we will be frankly stupid to try and cover, namely Syria or Iraq in, in this 64-year-old Land Rover. Um, but there are, as the world changes, sometimes for the worse, sometimes for the better, a whole chunk of the world opened up to us that wasn't available to the team in 1955 namely China and the former Soviet Union. So we rerouted our route to take in uh, China through Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, uh, uh, Turkey, and then finally all the way here to Austria. So as well as covering some old ground, we've been able to put Oxford in about 12 new countries that it's never been to before, uh, which is quite, this is quite exciting. It's exciting as going back over old ground. But... Um, yeah, we are almost at the end of our journey. I'm really grateful that I get the chance to, to recap some of this for you. Now, how has it been? Uh, this is one of my favourite photos from the whole trip. Now, poor Dr. Silva, he's used to much warmer climbs in Indonesia. Uh, in fact, I think you've got, what, seven layers of clothing on there? This was in the middle of Tibet, uh, when Oxford's left fuel tank was refusing to drain. 
uh, and it involved Nat having to siphon through a hose and spit fuel everywhere. Um, but we have been up to around 5,500 metres in altitude. We have had extreme altitude sickness uh, from the team. Even a doctor went to hospital. Nosebleeds, uh, sort of semi-frostbite. Um, and um, it has been very tough on the team. We've, we've been through jungles, deserts, mountains, but we are thankfully in Vienna all still here in one piece. Now, people don't really care about the humans. They want to know what happened to Oxford. Uh, how has Oxford fared? Now, apart from, uh, I think, the brakes failing, the dynamo failing, the battery failing, the fuel pump failing, the lights failing, uh, the regulator failing, um, uh, the roof almost falling off. Uh, apart from that, it's been absolutely fine. She has, <laughs> she has visited uh, a workshop in almost every country along the way. We're just down well. Ah, yes. <laughs> but there was, one, uh, there was one episode where Oxford really tested our patience. Um, this was from Turkmenistan, which is one of the most reclusive nations on earth. They let in fewer tourists every year than North Korea. And this is a place that we were really fascinated to go to. We galloped in there uh, about 10 kilometres into the country, travelling 70 kilometres an hour. Um, the wheel decided to come out in its entirety whilst we were moving, uh, which also helpfully takes the brakes with it. Uh, so thankfully, Turkmenistan is 80% desert. Uh, there's only about 6 million people in a country the size of France. So thankfully we were able just to cruise, well, I say cruise, I mean take a huge trench out of the road, uh, into this lay-by, and nobody was hurt. Nat and I were driving, and at the time we were a little bit shocked, but had this have happened in Nepal or China, on one of those dangerous mountain roads, it could have been very different. So we're very glad that we're here. Thankfully the Doc and Larry are always there to put Oxford back together. Because uh, the rest of us don't know that much about cars as they do. Um, but it also is an episode that I will be telling for the rest of my life, I think. <laughs> it's, um, so Oxford is here. The beauty of a 1955 Land Rover is that whatever breaks, you can fix. The mechanics in Turkmenistan had never seen a Series 1 Land Rover before, but they were able to confidently machine new parts for this car, such was its simplicity. Um, now, what's coming next? Ah, as well as the bad times, there have been the good times. There's been moments like this where we've got to tell our story. There have been moments where we've shut down whole cities, Singapore, Budapest, <coughs> uh, Bangkok, uh, with, with convoys of dozens, not hundreds of, of Land Rovers following us. This still has to be one of my favorite moments in, in, in Istanbul, when we were let onto the Formula One track. We were told that we were going on a tour, of the Formula One facilities. Uh, we didn't realize a tour meant driving 11 Land Rovers uh, as fast as we could. Uh, unfortunately, Oxford did not win. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised to hear. But the beauty of driving this car is the opportunities that it gives us. And yesterday, we were hugely lucky uh, to go and meet the new defender from Land Rover in Slovakia, to meet the Prime Minister of Slovakia, uh, as you do, um, and to have a tour, in fact, drive Oxford, I wish I had the photos, I haven't got them yet, of to drive Oxford through the beautifully clean manufacturing plant. <laughs> uh, we were dripping everywhere, obviously. Um, but it has been an extraordinary journey, and in just over a week's time, we'll be getting back to Folkestone in the UK, where there will be 200 Land Rovers waiting for us, and we will finally take Oxford home. So I want to give you just a little tiny taste of some of the things that we've seen so far. <clears throat>
So thank you very much for, for listening. Um, if you are interested in the story, uh, you can find us on social media where there's, there is so much content there, videos, photos. Unlike the first overlanders who had typewriters and maps, we have Facebook and the internet. Uh, <laughs> we've been able to tell our story as we go. But in, in 2020, there will be a TV series coming out about The Last Overland. And as soon as I've had some sleep, there will be a book coming out about The Last Overland. So I'm very grateful uh, for you for listening today. And we, as a six, would love to ask any, answer any questions that you might have about our stupid journey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>